I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Physics with Beth and Beth. We're still on that AP Physics 1 curriculum. This is our first video in Unit 6. Uh, remember that the curriculum this year for AP Physics 1 has been revised. And uh, so this is a new title for this unit. It's got kind of a mouthful, but it's energy and momentum of rotating systems. All right, so we've got several videos coming at you uh, for this, this new unit. It was used to be included in, in the unit you just finished up with, unit five, in that rotational torque and rotational dynamics. But anyway, we're gonna talk about energy today. So this is the first video in this unit. We have, as always, when we were working in the last unit in rotational dynamics and, um, and torque, we talked about linear, what we know, and then what our new piece is. I think it just makes it much more understandable if we can compare the two. All right, so we're going to talk about kinetic energy today. All right, kinetic energy linear looked like this. The kinetic energy is one half mv squared, that velocity squared, and that's that linear uh, velocity. All right, for rotational, we're going to say, hey, kinetic energy, and by the way, uh, ke, sometimes you'll see it as just k, but um, I like to use ke, but whatever. Uh, either one's accurate. Um, and the symbol, we already know the symbol, but sorry, the unit is a joule, right? Well, the unit's still gonna be a joule, for the rotational. So our unit is still gonna be a joule. All right, and our kinetic energy for rotational is one half, but instead of using mass, we're using that rotational inertia or moment of inertia, I mean the same thing. And instead of linear velocity, we're using that rotational velocity or also called angular velocity. So that is the equation for your kinetic energy. Now, remember that that moment of inertia, rotational inertia, is gonna depend on the shape it's going to depend on where that mass is distributed, and they're going to usually give you that. Whether it's a hoop, whether it's a disc, a solid sphere, a hollow sphere, uh, the more mass on the outside, remember, gives you a greater moment of inertia. And all that really means is that resistance to rotate. The higher the number, the more resistant it is to rotate. The lower the number, the less resistant it is to rotate. And it just says, hey, let's roll, right? Let's go. So anyway, so that's your difference. Now, here is the big difference that you have to understand, is that as things are rotating now, if they're like wheels, tires, those kind of things, they are rotating, so they have a kinetic energy. And by the way, we like to call this, I forgot this, this is K, it's K-E rot. Uh, my students always like to call it carrot or K rot. Sometimes they'll say K rot or carrot, but anyway, uh, that's to denote the difference. But as this thing is rotating, a tire or uh, on a bike or a car, as it's rotating, you have this rotational kinetic energy. But if it's a tire and it's up against the surface, you also have your linear kinetic energy. This whole thing is moving down the road in a line and the wheel itself is rotating. So you now have, as I, as I move this down, this block, I now have two types of kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy and linear kinetic energy. And we actually have a fancy word for that. We call it translational kinetic energy. And all that fancy word, that big word means is it's the kinetic energy for linear, but due to a tire rotating or something rotating, all right? So we call it translational when it's with rotational. If a tire is causing a rotational kinetic energy and it's causing that car to move down the road, then we call it translational. It just means in a line, that linear uh, kinetic energy, okay? Perfect, again, the wheels on the bus, that song that we have in the United States, wheels on the bus go round and round, but the bus goes down the road. So there's your two types of energy. Now I have this, I have a tire rolling on level ground. We're just gonna jump right into this and do a sample. I have this tire rolling on level ground without slipping. Now that's the other thing. You're gonna see this without slipping. What does that mean? Without slipping, let's say I have this ball and I'm rolling it down this ramp. It's not slipping, it's just rolling. Slipping would be if this ball started sliding, it started moving so fast it was sliding. 
now you would have kinetic friction. But if it's rolling without slipping, it means you have no kinetic in, uh, friction and you don't have energy that is leaving the system, right? Because remember, friction is always that force that's going to take energy away from the system. All right, perfect. Now, um, we have a tire rolling on level ground without slipping. Find the total kinetic energy in terms of velocity and mass. Okay, assume the tire is a hoop. So, and they told us what our moment of inertia is or our rotational inertia, it's MR squared for a hoop. And we're gonna assume that tire, uh, they would say has a mass M. They would say a tire with mass M, okay? So they want total kinetic energy of that tire and it's on level ground, it's just rotating. Well, here we go, let's go. We have our kinetic energy total now we have two types that is a tire on level ground it's not slipping it's rolling and it's moving down on a linear line as well so we're going to have that linear or what we really call translational kinetic energy plus this kinetic energy rotational because the tire is rotating as well so now we have two kinetic energies now we're just going to put in our, uh, our equations for them. So my kinetic energy total for my translational here, or my linear, is just one half mv squared. It's the one we know. All right, then my kinetic energy rotational is one half i angular velocity squared. Our moment of inertia, or rotational inertia, times our angular velocity squared. Herein lies the problem. All right, you cannot add, straight up add, velocity with angular uh, velocity because they are not the same. This is in meters per second. Well, and then it's actually squared, so it's meters squared over second squared, but the velocity itself is meters per second, and our angular velocity itself is radians per second. So you can't just add these two together because they're not even the same units, right? We're not talking about the exact same thing. But here's the good news, we can relate them. If you remember from unit five, we said, hey, that velocity, that translational velocity or that linear velocity was equal to r times the angular velocity. All right, so I can now, if I want this in terms of v, I want it in terms of v, I am going to go ahead and I am going to put that, I'm going to solve for this angular velocity, that would be V over R equals that angular. And that is your linear velocity, tangential, translational, whatever you want to call it, but it's your linear velocity divided by R equals that angular. All right, so I'm going to put that in for this, so I'm just going to sub that. So now my kinetic energy total equals one half mv squared plus one half moment of inertia times v over r but remember you have to square that whole thing because angular all i did was substitute this in for my angular velocity but don't forget to square it all right now i'm going to go up here because i'm running out of room and i have my kinetic energy total is one half mv squared plus now my I, I have something to sub in for my rotational inertia too. This is a hoop. I'm assuming that tire is a hoop, so it's MR squared. So that's gonna be one half, and then I'm gonna put in for I, MR squared, and then I'm gonna go ahead and distribute the square. That would be V squared over R squared. Don't forget that you have to, this, we're not talking about centripetal acceleration here, it's not V squared over R. Uh, you have to take that squared, to the numerator and the denominator, the top and the bottom. Okay, so here we go. Now I can start cleaning this thing up. This is great. Look, I, can I have an R squared on the bottom and an R squared on the top. And that would be the radius of that tire. So now we have, I'm just gonna clean this up, the kinetic energy uh, translational is gonna be 1 half mv squared plus I have a 1 half mv squared. All right, well, okay, that's perfect. One half plus a half is a whole, so that's just equal to mv squared. And that's my kinetic energy total. So let's look at this one more time, is that when we have a tire, uh, like on a bike, on a car, on a bus, whatever, on a train, 
that you have the the vehicle itself is moving down the road so you have this translational or really linear kinetic energy and then you also have this rotational because the tire is rotating you have two types of movement so you have two types of kinetic energy now we can't add that velocity to our angular because they're not even the same units however we can relate them with this great equation so, and we are talking about the edge of the tire here, so that's why R is just the radius of the tire. So we have, because I didn't really say that very well before, but anyway, so we have this one half mv squared. I subbed in I, my, ro my rotational inertia, with mr squared, and I subbed in my angular velocity with my v over R, my velocity linear divided by my radius squared. you got to square the numerator and the denominator. R's cancel out. You end up with mv squared. Perfect. All right, now what if though we change this, and I told you this wasn't a tire anymore. I told you this is a disc. Still has mass m, but now this is one half for the disc. It's one half mr squared because that's what a disc is. Okay, so assume the tire, we said it was a disc. Okay, the only thing that changes is right here for my I, when I go to sub in for my rotational inertia, moment of inertia, whatever you want to call it, I am now doing one half mR squared. They love using a disc they, because a really, really easy mistake is to drop this first half. The half is already in the equation right here. So the half is still there, but a disc is one half mr squared. Okay, so you've got to watch that. So now we would still have, you still sub in your angular velocity is uh, that linear velocity divided by r and square top and bottom. But now we have this extra one half in here. So that's going to be one fourth, and the r still cancel, and we have one fourth mv squared because you have an r squared divided by an r squared, so those cancel. And now we have 1 half plus 1 fourth is 3 fourths mv squared. All right, so that's how you would do it. And if you had a hollow sphere, I mean a solid sphere, it would be 2 fifths mr squared. So you would have 2 fifths in here. All right, so that is how you find the total kinetic energy of this tire that's on level ground without slipping. And that's your concept on linear, rota uh, linear kinetic energy and rotational and why they go together when you're talking about uh, something rolling down the road with like tires. All right, thank you. I hope this helps. Please give us a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, please subscribe. We've still got, after this unit, we've still got two more units to go. We'll be posting videos on as well. So we would love it if you subscribe. And thank you for watching and happy physicsing.